holding up above that 19,400 mark for the Nifty. So let's see whether bulls take a holiday on the bears take a holiday by the end of this week. We're just in Tuesday right now. Mahindra Holidays, that's the one that we're talking about right now. Um, the highest quarterly resort income is what the company posted in the first quarter. The India business looked extremely good, but it was the European business where the losses expanded and as a result of which the overall consolidated performance was affected. Kavinder Singh, who is the managing director of the company, joins in now. Thanks a lot, Mr. Singh, for joining in. Um, you know, the second quarter so far, just wanted to know your uh, sense on what your watching in both the Indian business and the European business. Seasonally, the second quarter is strong for Europe. So, do we expect a turnaround here now? Uh, so, I think you just hit the nail on the head. Uh, quarter one uh, of the European business wasn't good because it's a seasonally weak quarter, as well as the effects of Russia-Ukraine war uh, are now being felt in terms of higher inflation, poor consumer sentiment. However, even in quarter one, something we noticed was that the timeshare sales were doing well. You know, Finns have a habit of holidaying and they love second homes. They can't afford now second homes because, you know, Euribor is at an all-time high. So the consumer financing is not really looking good for them. So they are now turning to timeshare and timeshare sales in Q1 were good. And Q2 also is very good. Q2 also happens to be seasonally strong quarter. So we definitely see a turnaround in the holiday club resorts in quarter two. As far as India business is concerned, we are doing well. Yes, the Himachal as well as Uttarakhand disturbances are there. But I think on occupancies, we will sail through. And on an overall level, the India business is looking good for Q2 as well. All right. Hi, Mr. Singh. Uh, you know, good morning and good to hear your optimism. I'll tell you what, Mangalam and me, when we had these long weekends, we were trying to get, uh, you know, resorts and hotels, but it was quite impossible. So it goes to show the kind of traction that your business is seeing on ground. Good to hear. But uh, we also understand that you've introduced a new product targeting us, millennials. Tell us uh, uh, more about this. Yeah. Uh, in quarter one, uh, we introduced a four-year product. Uh, as you know, that the real value in our business comes from the higher tenure products, like 25-year and a 15-year product. And of course, we understand that people want a foot in the door, they want to experience it before they upgrade. So the real game for us is to get millennials to look at us through this four-year product, experience the resort life and the experiences that we provide, and then upgrade. And just to let you know, our upgrades are trending at an all-time high. In quarter one, we grew our upgrades by 16% on year-on-year -year basis. So we are seeing a momentum in terms of our membership additions, aided by these shorter tenure products. But equally, we are seeing very good upgrades. So therefore, this is a good strategy. So, um, upgrades are great. Uh, of your overall member strength, could you give us a sense of how many are on the 25-year-old product, how many are in the four-year product, how many are in the one-year product? What exactly is uh, the membership breakup right now? So, uh, again, I want to share the good news uh, for your viewers is that our membership business is very heavily indexed towards longer tenure products. And longer tenure products are 25 years, 15 years, and even 10-year product that we have, the Bliss, which is meant for seniors. So we are, even today, on a total base of 286,000. Significant majority of our members are longer tenure products. And the shorter tenure products are very, very minuscule and small, relatively speaking. Okay. Uh, longer tenure would be 90%? Is that significant? As I said, 95? I would say significant majority would be of their order. Uh, you know, we're just trying to quantify significant majority, <laughs> Mr. Singh, so we'll require your help in that. You know, it could be a majority is anything more than 50, right? 51%. So, uh, right. significant would be 80, 90, 95, 98%. So, as, since we normally do not put out these kind of numbers in the okay. public domain, but significant majority would be in the order of the numbers that you have been Got it. Okay. All right. What about your member membership additions from year on? I mean, on a quarterly basis, can you maintain this? Uh, I think you were indicating 5,000 per quarter, right? So, for us, you know, we would like to sell as much as we can. And obviously, we have now a great product mix starting from 3 years, 4 years, 10 years, 15 and 25. So, we are seeing huge traction in memberships, as you know, that the inflation is not soon coming down. And people do value the fact that when they buy our membership, other than the fact that on ASF, there is an inflation that we charge there is a very, very good run they have as they go through their tenure of membership. So we are seeing traction in the 
membership additions and uh, we, we we are now trending at about 5000 obviously our aim would be to do more and uh, we are seeing that how we can uh, one maintain the current levels and how we can grow further right you've spoken uh, you, you've spoken about uh, you know the upgrade rates in the first quarter can you give us a sense of renewal rates as well what is the average pending tenure of uh, the members that are there right now and when do those come up for renewal so uh, in our case uh, you know there is uh, there is no concept of renewal people pay their annual fee and 85% of our members currently out of our base are fully paid which means they have paid out their membership fee so there is no really renewal other than paying the annual fee and we are seeing at this moment of time uh, very little members which we had taken early on who are retiring of course they are being offered a second membership so we have still a very very large number of members who are fully paid and who are regularly holidaying and who pay their annual fee diligently Mm. Mr. Singh, uh, you know, you could be uh, speaking to your target audience as well, Mangalam and me, but uh, <laughs> we would like to know what is the average rate, average realization a uh, year in India, if you could give us that number. Yeah, average realization, including the upgrades, typically that's what we release, is mm -hmm. roughly about 4 lakh rupees uh, per unit. And this is a number that we would we are seeing moving upwards because upgrades are doing well, because our membership additions are doing well. And we love the idea that people are taking multiple, uh, you know, right. types of memberships because this helps us to keep them engaged through the upgrades and various other programs that we have. So, 4 lakh rupees obviously would have a slight downwards skew because of the addition of lower duration members as well. Roughly for a 25-year uh, plan, what would the fee be? So, typically at a 25-year plan, if you are buying a red or a purple studio membership, would range between six six and a half lakhs to about eight nine and nine and a half lakhs depending on what kind of payment conditions you are opting for we do give significant discounts if people pay up front versus people taking on emi we love the idea when people do higher down payments because that ensures that they will start holidaying immediately all right we take that point uh... And uh, will there be enough rooms for people? Because 5,005 rooms is what you're at. Your long-term target is 10,000 rooms. Um, where, uh, what's the outlook for this year and the year after? So we are very excited about our journey of taking 5,005 rooms that we have, which we did in about 25, 26 years. Over the next seven years, we want to take them to 10,000. We see massive tailwinds in the leisure business. You know the reasons uh, why people are holidaying, and I would not probably <laughs> spend time on that. So we believe that we have uh, everything that we need, whether it is you know capital, whether it is demand, we have it all to be able to take these rooms to the next level, which is 10,000 rooms. And I can hasten to myself to add that we are actually having a right now, right. as we speak, about 950 crores worth of capex in play as we speak, and we would like to double or triple okay. this the next one or two years. Okay, Mr. Singh, always good hearing your thoughts. Thanks so much for stopping by and speaking to us here on CNBC TV 18. We look forward to having a chat with you in the coming weeks as well. Well, for the time being, we'll slip into a short break, come back, continue to focus on markets and stock-specific action.